Everyone loves sports and enjoys watching them, but sometimes the place that gives people hope and the sportsman spirit can be converted into a place where you can see hate speech and actions. The thing that teaches us to stay calm when we are defeated shows us how bad people can react to their defeat. Welcome back to Rally Rackets. In this video, we'll talk about some of the most embarrassing moments in the history of tennis. Let's dive right into this. Daniel Kohler vs. Stefan Kubek Daniel Kohler spent his professional tennis career winding up opponents and smashing rackets, earning a reputation as a questionable character. Kohler had already been suspended twice in his career for bad behavior on the court before this match. Imagine their surprise when they realized it was Stefan Kubek who had grabbed their throat back in 2010. That, however, is not the end of the story. The video was being played because Kohler had already been the instigator, hurling verbal insults at Kubik while knocking his racket from his hands. The crowd's reaction, jeering the assaulted Kohler as he exited the court and applauding Kubik, confirms that the video only captured the end of the fight, and that whatever happened before that meant Kohler was the bad guy. Kohler has received a two-year suspended sentence and a fine for encouraging betting on his website since that match in 2010. A year later, he was sentenced to life in prison for match-fixing. Andy Roddick, the honorable mention. Those who didn't make the final cut, the spats that weren't quite nasty enough to make it in here, get an honorable mention. Andy Roddick comes to mind as the ideal candidate for this slide. Andy has become very inept at expressing his disappointment and frustration with line calls and wet courts, but he's simply not nasty enough to make the list. Another incident that did not cut is Leighton Hewitt's long-running feud with James Blake, which began with a racist remark about Blake and a line judge during the 2001 US Open. A worthy entry maybe, but neither player has ever made a big deal of it, and recent exchanges have been as simple as over-enthusiastic fist pumps. Hardly nasty stuff. Rafael Nadal vs. Chair Umpire and Referee Because Tomasz Burdick and Rafael Nadal have some history on the tennis court, this match was intriguing even before it began. Things began to boil over when the umpire made controversial calls. Burdick appeared to be about to lose his cool and spit the dummy out after a very late overrule from the chair but instead, he decided to challenge the call, because Hawkeye showed that the ball was in, by millimeters. The umpire awarded the point to Burdick rather than ordering a replay. Nadal was furious. Not only had he stopped playing, but he had also returned the ball to the court. Burdick should have received the point only if his shot was determined to be non-returnable. It's difficult to say a ball is non-returnable when it's been returned. Even after reading the rule book, it is difficult to determine what call the umpire and, indeed, the match referee was making. The only option, given that Nuddall had returned the ball, was to replay the point. It's no surprise he went insane. Jeff Tarango vs. Wimbledon Jeff Tarango had to be having a bad day for this to happen. Back in 1995 at the All England Club, the American abruptly ended his tournament by storming off the court in the middle of a match. Starting with a disputed call, things escalated to the point where Tarango demanded to speak with an umpire supervisor, who was unable to calm the situation down sufficiently. Tarango had had enough of the court after receiving a code violation for claiming umpire Bruno Rebu was corrupt. Mr. Tarango never spoke to Rebu again, but his wife waited outside the changing area and slapped him as he exited. Tarango later stated in interviews that he had heard stories about French umpire Rebu being favorable to some players, though this was never proven and Rebu continued to work as an umpire for six years after the tournament. It's an age-old tactic in any sport to try and psyche out your opponent on the field, but it's not very often that you see it work. Yes, players get inside each other's heads and performance can be affected. Lopez and Monaco vs. Pays and Boo Pati Feliciano Lopez and Juan Monaco showed their emotion. Leander Pays, who has been involved in more than one spat, and his doubles partner, Mahesh Bhupati, both of India, pushed the Spanish-speaking pair a little too far. Both sides appeared to make deliberate efforts to hit the ball directly at one of their opponents before more verbal back and forth led to a confrontation at the net. In the end, it worked, and the Indians won in straight sets, showing that tennis isn't always played on the court. Sometimes the match can be in the head. Karyos mocks Djokovic in empty stadium. 
Nick Kyrgios escalated his feud with world number one, Novak Djokovic, at the Australian Open by replicating the Serbs' trademark celebration inside an empty Margaret Court arena. Before a men's doubles match with partner Fantasy Kokonakis, the Australian imitated Djokovic's celebratory gestures to all four corners of a stadium. When asked to explain his entrance, the Australian, who was knocked out of the singles by Dominic Thiem, said, Just feeling the love. I'm just trying to spread the word about the celebration. Everyone enjoys the celebration. It's popular. Karyos called Djokovic a tool for requesting better conditions for players during their 14-day pre-tournament quarantine, doubling down on his criticism of Djokovic's ill-fated Adria tour earlier in the COVID-19 pandemic. Djokovic said he did not have much respect for the Australian off the court. Rafael Nadal hit Novak Djokovic in the face. Rafael Nadal hit Novak Djokovic in the face with a backhand shot near the net at the Rogers Cup in what was a pretty epic non-grand slam match. In the third set, Nadal hit a drop shot that forced Djokovic to come to the net, and after hitting his drop shot back to Nadal, Djokovic got a little more tennis ball than he probably expected. Djokovic tried his hardest to get a racket on the ball, but it smacked him in the face, and the world number one was visibly upset about it. Of course, there was no bad blood when the match ended, with both players hugging at the net, with Novak saying after his match, Whenever we play against each other, it's always a thrilling match for the crowd to see. We are both competing at an extremely high level. We're both hoping to win these games. Serena Williams lost her temper against a lineswoman. Serena Williams was world number two at the time, and she was in the final of the US Open. The American's goal was to retain her title at all costs. Kim Clasters, an ex-retiree, is up against her who has defeated her sister in an epic match. In a nutshell, there was an emotional backdrop. Shino Surubuchi, the lineswoman to her left, was adamant. The service has a foot fault. Serena paused and booed. The American looked at the baseline, dismayed, hands on hips. Serena attempted to refocus. However, it was too late. She dashed to the chair of Shino Surubuchi, a lineswoman since 2002. I pray for players not to step on the line with their feet, the lineswoman told Sports Illustrated a year later. However, if the players do, we must call it. The world number two gestured and pointed a finger at the official before saying a few words. Serena Williams continued to yell in front of the Japanese lineswoman. Sports should be something that should inspire the young generation. The ethics, integrity, and pride of every sport should be maintained in the field. This was all from the video. Hope you all liked it. Also, share your remarks in comment section and don't forget to hit the bell icon.